Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Exprino modules. And just like normal JavaScript modules, they're a way of importing code into your project from other files. So a quick example, which I pulled up is, uh, they have a module made for the Wii nunchucks. So we can import that here. Type in a Wii. Now we've imported the Wii nunchuck modules. And this specific code is coming from the Exprino list of modules supported from uh, their server. So if you pull up the modules page, you can see all the available modules that are currently uh, hosted by the Exprino project. So you can see a whole long list of modules, and each module has its own little readme. So if you go look at the weed numchuck, click it. We can see a little write up and then how to set up the default way. So these modules can be stored in multiple different ways. They can be stored um, on some summer server from Exprino, on your local host, uh, your local host server, uh, even from a GitHub page with an HTTP link. Um, these modules can be loaded from the flash or from storage. And there are a few built-in modules as well. So if we go back to this example, they have this I squared C setup call. So this I squared C is its own module. So, but that is preloaded with Exprino, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, using these modules is usually fairly straightforward because usually they only require one specific function. So if we go back to the example, grab this, put this in. We have this I squared C, which tells the pins. And then the actual module has a single connect function. So you just feed it in the connect, and then whatever object that this thing returns is going to be the thing you got to use. So from here, you can see if we go to the actual code for the module, it has a simple read function that returns a joy acceleration and then button click. So this this connect free function returns this object, which is a read, and it returns just these values. So you'd have this in a loop somewhere and you just read this value every time. So now that you've seen a rough example of how what a module looks like, we're going to actually try to make one. So we'll make a module that is basically this wrapped up. And we'll go through the steps of writing the module for testing, and then up to the point where theoretically you could try to submit this up to the Exprino project. Okay, so if we're about to start to write a module just to blink an LED on and off on a specific interval, just like this, if you turn this into a module, this is kind of what it looks like. First, we have a function called LED blink mod, which is basically going to be an LED pin and an interval. That's it. So, and then we're just going to link all these properties to the object. And then we're going to need an interval ID to stop it. We're going to need an LED state to toggle. And then digital write to turn it on. LED pin and then LED state. Okay. So now we're going to attach functions to this. So we're going to go to the make these prototypes. 
functions. So, and oh, this will be the start function. And we're using these prototypes uh, instead of just passing a function with a bunch of objects in it, like something like this. Because if we start function, this function. If you go this route, if you had multiple LED blinking mods, you'd be creating this function multiple times. So using the prototype allows you to not have to duplicate the functions. Okay, so this start function will be, we'll take, grab the interval ID, uh, set interval, we'll create the function, set the interval, and this will basically just uh, flip the LED state whatever it's not currently. And then do it just right. So LED pin. Yeah, this would be good. And then I'm just going to steal the stop function, which is basically going to stop the interval if the ID equals not zero. We set it here. Yeah. Once we clear it, Set the interval to zero, LED state to zero, and then do a digital write. So we've got our two functions, and then we're going to export this out so that the user will be able to connect to it. So Exports.connect this function, and it's going to take basically a mod of this pin interval. And then we'll return a new instance of LED blink mod. Pin and enter. Okay. So we've got our basic simple module that just blinks an LED up to a specific interval on a specific pin. Now, how do we go about using this? So we, if you're using the web ID, you can't currently grab a new file, like save this to like LED blink mod. We can't currently just do LED blink mod equals require LED blink mod. At least with the web ID. With web ID. So the easiest way to test this first time around is doing this all in one file. Now, if you're trying to test your module all in one file, this export is going to cause you problems because this code is going to be compressed and sent to the device. It's not going to know what exports is. So, we're going to do, we're just going to tell it exports, it's just some file. And now we can grab our blinky module and test this out. D13500. So now if we go to blinky.start. We should be able to this cone. We should be able to see a blinking LED light. Perfect. So, where do we go from here? We've got a blinking LED. So, we want to move this over and test this as its own thing. Like you want to test this as if it was going to be loaded from an external server. Uh, so we can do is we can start a new file and we'll just grab the stuff that's not being used. This, this over here. 
and then we'll save this into storage. We'll create a new file called LED link mod. And this will flash onto the device. And then we can do this require. All right, so when we push this up, what you'll see is there's a module LED blink mod not found. But since we're using the module here, there'll be an error if the module didn't actually load successfully on your device. Since we don't see a uh, blinking.start not defined, that means it's currently working. Other than you can just see the device actually working. <laughs> so now we want to push this up. So what you have to do first is look at the Exprino docs page. Exprino GitHub docs page. So uh, this repo houses all the code for the Exprino website and all the JavaScript modules. So here and all the modules here. And they are located in the devices folder. And inside the devices folder, you'll see a bunch of folders that have images inside of them. And then below that, you'll see a JavaScript and a markdown file. These markdown files make these HTML pages. So this HTML page usually consists of all the context from the markdown file and the JavaScript that was used. So what we need to do if we want to get our module in here is go to docs. You're going to need to fork. And then on your repo, you're going to need to basically, here you have to basically clone your code. So I already have that here, but if you didn't, you should get clone, then the docs. Then you'd want to get check out uh, some different branch name, whatever your module is called. So. Now, if we go into the Exprinos, the devices, and a bunch of JavaScript files, and all we need to do is make dir LED blink mod. And we'll touch the LED blink uh, JavaScript. I think that's what I call this JS and then we'll touch LED blink mod.md. Okay, so now in here we'll steal all this code and then we'll look for in devices LED mod.md and JavaScript. So we're going to paste all this JavaScript, and we get to remove this export, since that's going to be handled when you actually require the JavaScript. Now, before we send this off, we'll put some comments. So this is the constructor, the LED blink mod. This is a pin for the LED, and then this is an interval for milliseconds. I got uh, Copilot that's helping me with the recommendations. Okay. So, oh, yep. Oop. And then we'll do one at the bottom. Yep. All right. Perfect. So that's basically done at this point. Now let's go to the markdown file, or our markdown file, and we're going to go basically look at an example and steal most of its uh, boilerplate code. So this right here is most of the header information, so we'll put 
money there. Uh, I guess this is MIT. Um, LED blink. And let's see, the keywords for this would be LED. Uh, this will help for uh, searching for this stuff. And we need an image. So we'll add to our folder LED link mod. Okay, LED image. Blink mod WebMD. So this is all markdown. All this stuff is pretty generic, uh, except for <laughs> the keyword part. But uh, lastly, oh, actually, nextly we'll have to add a quick little example. So we'll take this. Add that there. This is our quick little example code. We'll use a tag here. Example. Now, lastly, we want to append the JavaScript uh, descriptors or comments. Um, so we do that with this. Uh, this is uh, specifically a uh, Exprino kind of thing, but basically, this is going to copy this into here but just a shortened version of it and we can see that okay, if we clear this and we do a patched up build now this will go through and build everything um, there's two different uh, of this we have uh, the build which will build everything and you, you need that to generate the uh, HTML from the MD script, uh, MD files, but if you just want to run the script that minifies the JavaScript, you can use this build modules.sh. Now this will probably take a while, so I'm just going to pause this. Okay, so now it's built, and now we can run npm run start, and then we'll be able to go to our website, localhost 34. Um, this is just like um, the unstylized version of the website, but it's good enough for what we're trying to accomplish. And now we want to go to our things called LED blink mod. So we see our image, our little example, and oh, uh, all, it almost grabbed the, the functions. Uh, let me try that one more time. And we'll grab this and then we'll put that down there as well. Um, we'll remove this. So I think it doesn't grab the constructor one. So we'll run this and then just check this one more time. So I did a bash.build. Let's do an npm run start. We'll reload the page. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so now we have our local, we've got our web page looking good. Now, one last test is we can go here, communications, and if we want to load our module up for one final test, uh, let's grab the website. Then modules, and then we should be able to load this up. Yep. And unlike before, we don't see the um, uh, module not defined. This wasn't defined before. Cool. Perfect. So this is still in there. You can see that here, but. It's going to use um, the required from the server because it's getting linked together with it. 
So at this point, we've fully tested the module. So now we can go back here. Uh, we get the docs. And then you can do your git add all, git commit, and then your git push origin, uh, branch name. And from there, you can just do your pull request. Uh, da, da, da. This guy is the master, but this guy was one of my branches. Open pull request, and then from there, uh, as long as there's no errors or any other problems, uh, get pulled into the it'll be pulled in the main branch. Um, so at this point, uh, yeah. If you have any questions, leave in the comments down below. Um, there's also a great forum, uh, the Sprinos forum. Um, that's it.